I want to still make it more, even more obvious that like, do not use one of the differential forms when you have shock waves. Okay, so so we just compute the speed of the shock wave to be essentially uh, f l minus f u. So this is f l is f of u l, f u is f of uh, f of u r. So this is u l minus u r, right? So so instead of d f d u, this is delta f over delta u. And so let's try it on the Burgers equation. We already know that on the Burgers equation, we have the speed of the shock wave being ul plus ur over 2, right? So that's what we derived. But there is a contradiction here. If we multiply both sides of the equation by u, and, mani uh, and mani manipulate using your calculus skills, we can get something pretty interesting. So first of all, the time derivative term, there is a classical trick that actually is very useful in stability analysis, they call nonlinear stability analysis of differential equations, that when you multiply u with du dt, it is actually equal to partial partial t of u squared over 2, right? So this is the same kind of chain rule we use to go back and forth between the differential, be between the primitive form and conservative form of the Burgers equation. There is a similar trick you can use on the spatial derivative term. u times du square over dx square is equal to something times du cube over dx. And that's something, let me derive it. So, so du cube dx is equal to uh, is equal to the derivative of u times u square over dx, right? And now you expand it. This is equal to u times d, uh, du square dx plus u square times du dx. And the same thing can be represented as derivative of u times u times u which can be represented as uh, u squared times du dx times 3. Right, so you can move one of the u out, move the, you can move this u, uh, you can move this times this out of the differential, and you can move this and this out of the differential, and you can move this and this out of the differential. So that, that like works uh, like that. So, so the same, so the same thing uh, is equal to three times this, or it is equal to this plus this. Okay, so let me let me do a derivation. So u squared times partial u partial x is going to be equal to one third of partial u cube partial x, and now we substitute this into that, we get. Partial, Q, partial u cube partial x is equal to u times partial u square partial x plus one third of partial u cube partial x, which means u times partial u square partial x is equal to two third of partial u cube partial x. So this is going to be two third. So this is the whole derivation of, of this. Right. Okay, so with these two substituted into this equation, what we have, and uh, uh, of course we have a over 2 here, so this is going to be a 1 third uh, if we divide by 2 here. 
So this equation therefore becomes partial partial t of half u square plus partial partial x of a third of u cube equal to zero. So we have two two equations. One equation is the original Burgess equation, and another conservation law. This is also a conservation law that is derived from the Burgess equation. And that conservation law, let's denote v equal to half of u square, and that f of v is then going to be u cube over three, which is equal to two v to the three half power divided by three, right? So, so this is nothing but writing the same equation, Burgess equation, into a different form by doing a bunch of uh, uh, manipulations of the derivatives. But with that, alternative way of writing down the conservation law. We have a different shock speed. The shock speed in this case is going to be equal to delta Fv over delta V. So it's going to be equal to delta of this 2V 3 over 2 over 3 divided by delta V which is different from half of U, uh, UL plus UR. So, so these two only agrees when UL and UR are infinitesimally close to each other and they don't agree over a finite range of UL and UR. It's not obvious, but like you can do the derivation and see that. So what does that mean is what does that mean is all this derivation we did down here only hold over an infinitesimal range UL and UR. All the derivation we did only holds for the differential form of the equation. It does not hold for the conservative form, for the integral form of the equation. So when you choose a discretization, we can never base the discretization on some differential manipulation, for example, the Taylor series. Right? The Taylor series is a manipulation of the differential form of the equation. And that is no longer a reliable way of manipulating the differential equation into another form to solve it. We should rely on something else. And this lecture, I'm just going to show you what that something else is.